based on what you've said, Tanis, this it, it seems like it's very important to know more about um, Lewy body dementia. Um, unfortunately, it's it's very difficult to get funding to do this type of research, especially the the longitudinal clinical studies that you're doing. Um, this is a very time-consuming and very requires may a s very significant commitment on your part and on the patient's part um, for this uh, study that can extend over many years. And it's becoming more and more difficult to get that sort of funding through the uh, National Institutes of Health. And that's one of the reasons the, the recent gift to the Mayo Clinic by the Mangurian Foundation is of, of such great importance to us because it allows us to uh, extend these longitudinal clinical studies, um, but, but at the same time also to fund um, research in the laboratory um, that, uh, that will allow us to um, better diagnose the disease, to differentiate it from Alzheimer's disease, and even to develop um, uh, methods to screen for drugs that might be helpful in, uh, in treating the disease through basic uh, laboratory research. The Mangurian funds have just been incredibly helpful. As Dennis has mentioned, the um, NIH, the National Institute of Health um, budget has been very uh, limited lately and we have come across some tough times in the research uh, arena, so to speak, in terms of funding and yet we have uh, uh, a lot of work that we feel needs to be done and, and very important work in our efforts to try to understand this disease and to try to help our patients and help develop new therapies and, and treatment objectives. And uh, I hope Dr. Dixon will talk a little bit about some of the laboratory work also that you have planned. But one of the things that I think this Mangorian gift has done for us certainly has been to allow us to continue with our work uh, during these difficult, difficult times, financially. In, ter in terms of the laboratory work, one of the projects is actually uh, using a, a cell-based model, a, a petri dish model, in which human nerve cells are growing in the petri dish, and they've been genetically engineered to actually produce Lewy bodies. Uh, and now that cell can be actually used to screen for drugs that will inhibit the formation of Lewy bodies. And uh, this is work that's being done by, by Dr. Yen here in, at Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville. The other type of research that we're doing is um, based on uh, genetics of uh, Lewy body dementia. And we've uh, collaborated with a number of investigators here at Mayo Clinic and, uh, and other institutions to e explore the uh, possible genetic risk factors for Lewy body dementia, and have actually uh, already discovered uh, several genes that may cause uh, Lewy body dementia. Um, and it, it, I think it in, in that context, uh, it's worth noting that the protein that it, it accumulates within Lewy bodies is referred to as alpha-synuclein. And one of the first genes that was discovered to cause Parkinson's disease is synuclein, the gene for alpha-synuclein and mutations in the gene for alpha-synuclein produce familial Parkinson's. But if one carefully looks at the patients in those families, they in fact have uh, very many features of Lewy body dementia. It's not a, they're not at all typical of Parkinson's disease. Uh, they have an earlier onset, they have very frequent uh, visual hallucinations, and they very often have dementia. So you, instead of thinking these of these as genes for Parkinson's disease, familial Parkinson's, we might better think of them as, as mm -hmm. genes for um, familial Lewy body dementia. That being said, uh, work here um, by Dr. Graf Radford, uh, and you're part of this study as well, Tanis, looking at the frequency of, uh, of, of a family history of dementia uh, in Lewy body dementia patients that have come to autopsy compared to Alzheimer patients that have come to autopsy, revealed that, in fact, there was a greater frequency of family history of dementia in the, in the Lewy body patients than in the Alzheimer patients. Would, do you have anything additional to add to this, or? Well, it was a small, um, smaller, it was a small risk. It wasn't an, a large risk. So I don't want to give people the idea that it's a, a definite 
the likelihood that if they have one family member that they're definitely going to get, you know, Lewy body dementia. And it is a very common question that we get, you know, how uh, likely am I or my children to get this disorder if, you know, dad has it or that type of thing. And I think that's exactly what we're trying to understand is what is the genetic risk? What are the genetic variables that uh, make it likely to uh, pass on from one generation to the next. So that's what you're working on and so what you've done is excellent. The other side of the coin is the environmental factors that might uh, influence the onset of these disorders. And this is true for all uh, neurodegenerative mm -hmm. disease. There's a genetic component, there's an environmental component. Could you comment a little bit about the co-occurrence of Alzheimer's disease with Lewy body and dementia in your experience? So th this has been the really the, the, the most serious, serious question that uh, we deal with on, on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of the neuropathology of, of uh, dementia disorders in that um, more than two-thirds of the patients with um, Lewy body dementia actually have some or all of the features of Alzheimer's disease. And Alzheimer's disease is a disorder associated with the accumulation of two proteins, amyloid protein and tau protein. And in fact, mutations in the amyloid gene can cause familial Alzheimer's disease. So am amyloid is felt to be very important in terms of causing Alzheimer's disease. Um, but amyloid deposits are also seen in two-thirds of patients with Lewy body dementia. As the, the, there's a great deal of research on Alzheimer's disease and developing methods to detect amyloid, so that um, work at Mayo Clinic and other institutions have discovered ways to detect amyloid in the brains of living individuals through positron emission tomography, or PET scans. And interestingly enough, when PET scans are done for amyloid in Lewy body disease, you see that about a third, two-thirds mm -hmm. of Lewy body dementia patients also have an amyloid-like pattern. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, a much more work that needs to be done to uh, to disentangle what amyloid is doing in Lewy body disease and how it is different from Alzheimer's disease. But that other protein that I mentioned, the tau protein, is different. So in Alzheimer's disease, tau protein is, is, a, is, a, is a major player. It's, there's a abundant tau protein uh, in the brain in abnormal forms and structures we refer to as neurofibrillar tangles. In, um, uh, the abundance of that abnormal protein in Alzheimer's disease actually allows um, one to detect Alzheimer pathology through a spinal tap. You can measure tau protein in the, in the cerebral spinal fluid. When people have done similar studies in Lewy body dementia, they don't find the same elevation of tau. Mm -hmm. So um, Lewy body disease seems to be an, a disorder associated with amyloid and alpha-synuclein and Alzheimer's seems to be a disorder associated with amyloid and tau. And um, there's, that is what is being used currently to, uh, as, a, as a means to develop um, methods to differentiate the two in terms of a biochemical um, above and beyond the, the differentiation that you described in terms of uh, clinical, mm -hmm. neuropsychological, or mm -hmm. uh, sleep disorders. That are also different in terms of Lewy body dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Now one of your discoveries was that of a Lewy neurite. Is there a difference between a Lewy body and a Lewy neurite? <laughs> but in terms of the composition, they're both composed of alpha synuclein. Okay. Um, but in terms of their significance, it, um, they may be, uh, there, there may be differences. Um, so one of the problems with uh, understanding the pathology of Lewy body dementia is often when you look at the brain and look at Lewy bodies, um, such as we have here, I'm showing on the, uh, with the microscope, this is a, a Lewy body uh, from the brain of a patient with Lewy body dementia that's been uh, stained with an antibody-based method. This is called immunohistochemistry for alpha-synuclein. And the brown staining there actually shows the Lewy body inside of a neuron, and next to it, are several neurites. And what the, the, the conundrum in the, the field is that if you look at the brain and just look for Lewy bodies, there don't seem to be enough Lewy bodies to account for the se severe degree of cognitive problems that the patients have. But in fact, if you look at the neurites, there's usually many more neurites. And this suggests that the 
the synuclein pathology in Lewy body dementia is far more pervas pervasive um, than it is uh, with, with it just within the context of, of Lewy bodies. Um, so there, I, this is an uh, area of active investigation to understand how the synuclein is abnormal in Lewy body dementia. Um, I mean, it's a normal protein. It has normal functions in, mm -hmm. in terms of nerve cell communication. It's a synaptic uh, protein. Um, but why does it become abnormal? Why does it deposit uh, in these abnormal structures, the Lewy bodies and the main neurons? And there's a, a great deal more work that needs to be done uh, to explain that in terms of the biochemical changes and also in terms of modeling it. Um, there are um, mouse models um, that put in the human mutant synuclein gene and produce um, Lewy body-like structures in the mouse brain that, that can be then used to develop uh, better means of diagnosis and treatment. Um, but the mouse doesn't really develop the full spectrum of the disease that we, that we see in, in the human brain. And one of the, the key features that is missing is the, the extensive uh, neuritic pathology that we see in, in Lewy body dementia. So they don't have the Lewy neurites. They have that the Lewy bodies, but they don't have the Lewy neurites. So there is something about those Lewy neurites. And perhaps if we could find a way to uh, figure out what they're doing and figure out a way to identify them early right, on, maybe right. that's somehow related to the very early or cognitive features or that or we're even, seeing. Or even to detect them er at right. an early stage. Right. And this um, brings to mind another uh, project that's actually being supported by the Mangurian Foundation, and that's an imaging project by Kejian mm -hmm. Kantarshi in uh, Cliff Jack's lab uh, at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, where they're working on developing um, methods to diagnose um, Lewy body mm -hmm. dementia mm -hmm. with imaging methods yeah. using um, magnetic resonance imaging or MRI type scans, as well as um, studies where they look at the, the the chemical composition of the brain through M what's called MRS, or magnetic resonance spectroscopy. Um, and it, given the, that the greatest abundance of the uh, synuclein pathology is in neurites, it's likely that the imaging uh, methods that are being developed by, by Kejol and, and Cliff will actually focus on uh, the, the, this very pervasive neuritic pathology. Right. And we're trying to pool our resources with the clinical information to try to detect using imaging what are the what's the comp what is the signature basically what is the clinical signature what's the imaging signature how do they go together again so that we can detect what's going on as early as possible so then and perhaps we can intervene and, and another aspect of that study therapy. is in fact the, um, using the amyloid PET scans right. in Lewy body dementia so the combination of the changes that you see with the MRI, mm -hmm. MRS, PET scan, and then the clinical mm -hmm. um, presentation um, in uh, patients that are studied over a, a long period of time, we'll hopefully we'll be able to come up the, with the, the ideal combination that allows us to diagnose it uh, precisely and at a very early stage. Mm -hmm.